welcome to my youtube channel mechanical magic mechanical learning tutorials so in this video i am talking about brakes so generally brakes having applications into so many industries and so many machineries and as well as onto an automobile applications so let us start with the brakes so brake means it is a mechanical device which produces the frictional resistance against the moving machine member in order to slow down or stop the motion of the machines so generally used to control the motion of an elements so the brakes absorb a kinetic energy of a moving members so the energy absorbed by the brake is released to the surroundings in the form of heat so generally with the application of friction that will be used to stop the motion of an elements so basically the classification of brakes so brakes generally classified by mechanical brakes electrical brakes and hydraulic brakes now in the mechanical brakes block brake band brake and important one internal expanding shoe brake so now starting with a block brake so mainly focus on to the mechanical brake so in which the first one is a block brake so generally that will be dividing into two categories first one is a single block brake or you can also say that single shoe brake double block brake or you can say double shoe brake now we will discussing with the in details of a block brake so single block or single shoe brake so just you can see over here the brake wheel that will be a rotating elements and with the help of lever and shoe mechanism that will be by the application of lever that shoe material it will be in contact of outer periphery of brake wheel so there will be a area which will be generating a friction between brake wheels and the shoe materials so with the application of friction and lever and shoe mechanism that will be controlling the speed of a brake wheel so generally brake in a action in a contact type so basically for a brake the shoe is not in touch with the brake wheel so whenever that will be the requirement of controlling the motion then and then it will be in contact with the brake wheel so now just yes, you can see over here brake not in actions so generally for any automobile applications so brake not in a action into the regular use but whenever that will be the requirements to controlling the speed then and then by the application of the lever should control the speed of an elements so here it will be the single shoe is being used or single block is being used to control the motion elements so that will be called as a single block or single shoe brake now we will discussing the second one and that will be double block brake or you can say double shoe brake so now as from the theory concern it consists of the two brake shoe applied at the opposite side of the brake drum which more or less eliminated the unbalanced force on the shaft due to the normal reactions so here you can see the double block or shoe brake so in the figure number a brake in engaged positions so opposite side two shoe brake or two block brake is being used so one of the side you can see over here that will be the fix and another and block and shoe you can say that will be the movable member so here by the application of bell crank lever that will be adjusted so whenever the periphery of a rotating elements or you can say drum it will be in contact with the block or shoe so that will be the controlling or you can say control the or stop the motion of a rotating elements second one the b figure indicating that brake is a disengaged positions so whenever it will be the free requirement of a free rotational elements so there will be no engagement of a shoe with the outer periphery onto the drum 
so whenever the requirement to controlling the speed or can say to stop the motion of a rotating elements so by the application of bell crank lever you can in contact with the block or shoe to the outer periphery of a rotating drum so here it will be the two shoe or two block is being used so that will be considering as a double block shoe brake so just you can see over here double block shoe brake in a bicycle so here it will be in the figure number one brake not in action so usually in a bicycle brake there will be no contact between brake blocks and the cycle wheel but whenever the requirements to controlling the speed of a bicycle so by the pressing of a brake so that will be tension providing into the string so with the application of the spring that will be connected with the cycle wheel to controlling the speed of a bicycle so now we can see the brake into the action whenever it would be the required to controlling the speed of a cycle so in the case of a band brake yes you can see over here so one of the band that will be fixed at o and another end that will be at b so whenever the requirement is to rotating a member so that band is it will be not in contact with the outer periphery of the drum so in center it will be the shaft and shaft is connected with the brake drum so by the rotating of the shaft that drum is rotated and the requirement to control the speed of that particular drum so by the operating a lever or you can say providing the pressure at p point so at o fulcrum that will be with the help of that it will be providing a tight side and sex slide so it will be providing the pressure onto the outer periphery of a drum by the application of the operating lever so that pressure it will be providing with the application of band so that band is will be used to controlling the speed of a drum so you should controlling the speed of a drum so band brake it consists of a brake drum brake band and a lever mechanism as a effort p is applied to the lever the drum can be brought to the standstills the lever is hinged at a fulcrum o and the end of the band are fastened at o and point b on the lever now important one internal expanding shoe brakes so here just you can see over here operating lever that will be connected with the cam profile with the application of the springs friction lining materials brake drums and shoe here as yes, you can see over here two shoe and two fulcrum o1 and o2 it will be used so by the application of internal expanding shoe brake i am interested to controlling the speed of a brake drum so generally in the this figure brake not into the actions so that brake drum it will be having a freely rotating member but there is a requirement of the controlling of a rotating member so by the application of the lever and cam profile it will be exerting the pressure internally expands so that brake lining or friction lining materials it will be in contact with the inner surface or inner side of a brake drum so that will be providing a friction and that friction it will be used to controlling the speed or you can say to stop the motion of a drum so here the internal expanding of shoe and that will be used to controlling the motion that's why it will be called as a internal expanding shoe brake so just you can see or observe brake into the actions now we will see the one of the animation view of an internal expanding brakes expanding shoe brakes 
so the shoe are pinned at o1 and o2 the shoes are kept in a non breaking positions by the application of springs or spring force as we can observe when the cam is operated the shoes are pushed outward against a brake drum the friction between shoe and the drum producing a braking torque resulting the reduce the speed of the drum or you can say stop the speed of the drum so if you like it if you understand so subscribe share mechanical magic mechanical learning tutorials